Book two of Era Two in the Mistborn series, Shadow of Self. I did like this one quite a bit still, but I have some issues and let's just get into that. I learned from the comment section of the first book in this era that I reviewed that apparently the entire concept for this world was originally kind of just a short story Brandon Sanderson had developed. I think some red flags were raised with me when I heard that and I'm seeing some results of those red flags in this book especially because if you kind of just write a short story you're not going to put the planning in for allowing for growth and you know you're not going to have the fully flushed out characters ready to go to slowly be unveiled to the reader and all the development and the world it's not going to be as thought out that i think as brandon sanderson often does and what i'm seeing is some stumbling that was kind of apparent in book one but since he just kind of expanded the original short story it wasn't super there but in book two i'm seeing it a lot more and in addition to that he's having to compensate for not giving female characters a lot of depth in the first one by flushing them out in the second one which he did a very good job of the female characters are really brought up to being a progressive level of development and given the time that they really need to be an interesting character and that that does help the book quite a bit character interaction across the board are much more interesting in Shadow of Self than they were in The Alloy of Law. But what that has taken away from, though, is time he could have used to develop Waxillium. And now Waxillium, our main guy, is pretty much the same character we're left with in book one. He does not develop much at all, period. And his entire emotional arc and journey in this book is pretty much just a train barreling down a track. Where it starts is obvious, and where it's going to end up is very obvious. And it just kind of barrels there. I feel no attachment to Waxillium whatsoever. He's interesting and he's just a fine kind of hurt tragic past gunslinger still and I was really hoping to see some more brought to him and I'm hoping in book three that will finally happen. Wayne was given quite a bit more to his character which I liked and now he is definitely the runaway best character in this era. Brendan Sanderson did something he's very good at where you take a character that you understand as they are and then you shift the light by flushing out their past to understand how they became who they are and then you just while that character is still the same you view them entirely differently and I find that brilliant he's done it with Delinar and now he's doing it with Wayne two very different characters but the result is the same someone who you just kind of viewed one way but now you understand on a whole nother level and so Wayne is now the runaway character the only one I really care about in era two and the one who's by far the flushed out and feels the most real due to his past and all his little ticks and things like that. Wayne's fantastic. Maris is still very cool to follow. I enjoy her arc quite a bit, um, but playing catch up with her development uh, again kind of took away in some aspects. I feel like if it had been done in the first book, this book wouldn't have had to spend so much time on developing everyone and maybe a little more time having a less predictable plot. And that's my biggest issue now with Era 2. I can forgive a predictable plot in your first book. In fact, it's almost expected in fantasy in a lot of ways. The first book in a series is going to have to follow some beats. But I found book 2 to be even more predictable. Book 2, about a third into it, I kind of took some notes of what I thought was going to happen and then literally every single one of them happened almost beat by beat and that was kind of unexcusable even the big twist at the end which i'm not going to spoil but the really tragic big twist to me i was like yeah I, I could call that kind of from a long way away as soon as they introduced that certain type of character it was like okay connection made which is just really disappointing i mean i can forgive it once and i kind of can forgive it a second time but if i see this again in book three it's, it's going to really start hindering my enjoyment of the continuation of Mistborn, which sucks because I really love Mistborn. It's very good, and the original trilogy has grown on me since I originally read them. Where I really want to commend Era 2, though, is the humor and the great ability to kind of evolve a world that's established. I know I harped on this in the last video a lot too, uh, but just again, it, this book is funny. I found myself laughing out loud at work while I was listening to the audiobook. I also just kind of found myself amazed at how much of a natural progression this felt from Era 1 in terms of, yeah, this is where this world would have grown to, especially with distrust of authority and things like that. It's great, super well done, and I enjoyed that probably the most out of anything in this book. And that's what's going to carry me into book three, because I 
don't need to know where the main plot really goes, sadly enough, but I do really want to see how this world continues to evolve. That is an interesting driving factor for me to keep reading a series. It's not necessarily the worst thing ever. I mean, if the roles were flipped, it, people wouldn't blink an eye, so I guess having them this way is going to be okay too. I just hope book three really blows me out of the water when it comes to some twists and turns. I just feel like Era 2 in the Mistborn series right now for me is a plane where we're kind of heading towards a destination I can see coming, but I don't know how much fuel we have left to get there. And I certainly don't want this plane to crash and I have to then walk to my destination. That's a weird metaphor, but I'm, I'm going to leave that in there. You guys just deal with that metaphor. I'm going to give Shadow of Self a shotgun blast to the face out of 10. It is certainly loud and entertaining in a way, but it, you know the second or third time it happens, it starts to get a little less, uh, a little less entertaining. So uh, that's a horrible metaphor, but I'm going to keep it in there also. If you want to support the channel, I have a Patreon link down below. The names appearing right here are my donors so far of the $5 amount, and I hope you all have a great one. Like and subscribe, all that fun stuff. Peace.